Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Life of a Civil Engineer. I am Payas. I'm a graduated civil engineering student as well as civil engineer, civil engineering professionalist. I make videos related to different topic of civil engineering and also I make videos about myself. Uh, I'm not too active in YouTube, but definitely I, I, I make videos occasionally. So those of you are connected with me in Facebook might have heard that uh, in this winter 2021 semester, I applied into uh, many different universities in Germany, which has the civil engineering department into their curriculum. And I ended up being uh, admitted into eight different uh, programs uh, in Germany. So uh, that's a, uh, quite a big number. So yeah, definitely. And uh, one of those courses, uh, uh, the most prestigious admission that I had from uh, uh, Technical University of Munich in civil engineering and also in environmental engineering. Uh, as uh, you might have known that Technical University of Munich is one of the most uh, prestigious university in the world and also uh, the it, it has been considered as the top most university in Germany. So definitely to get a, uh, to get an admission into uh, this university is not, not uh, quite an easy task so yeah so i i decided that what the tricks i followed and uh, you know, what are the things uh, that you should consider in your mind uh, when you are going to apply for this program i decided that i should uh, make a video on th this topic uh, so that i can share my experiences that how i cracked uh, in the good word as i should say that how i cracked the admission process uh, into the technical university of uh, munich so I basically applied into two different programs, uh, one in, in civil engineering and another one was uh, in environmental engineering. And uh, I ended up getting admission into both the programs. But uh, for this video, I mean, today I will be only focusing on the civil engineering. And uh, in the later part of the video, I will be also talking about the environmental engineering. Now, this video, I have divided this into two parts. Basically, in the first part, I will be discussing about what are the hacks or what are the strategy that I followed to get myself into this university and what are the things you should also keep these things uh, on your mind and in the later part of the video I'll be discussing about the uh, the, uh, the application method uh, the what are the documents basically you require and how should you apply and how should you sign up into their portal how, sh how should you take the VPD from the uni assist uh, those are the things that I'll be discussing in my later part of the video video but for today, I will be only focusing uh, on strategy that how I secured the admission into this university. So let's begin. So uh, yeah, so the thing is, um, as as you can see, I've titled here that let's debunk all the myths, the myths that are circulating around the Internet that, OK, to get into technical university of Munich, you have to uh, have a high CGPA, you have to have a good uh, car um, work experience your IELTS score GL score must be higher or something like that so let's see to what an extent this holds true so okay uh, the question I'm going to be uh, answering uh, in in this video like uh, the first question I've written here is it possible to apply uh, to civil engineering without IELTS so so I have downloaded this doc document from uh, civil engineering's website uh, uh, in uh, in Tom's website uh, of the civil engineering department. Uh, now the thing is, this uh, study, I mean, this document uh, document reads as uh, subject examination and study regulation. Now, unlike the uh, other programs uh, like sustainable resource management or other programs. Uh, in those programs, uh, they have clearly mentioned the admission criteria or what are the things uh, carries which mark uh, regarding the aptitude assessment. But in civil engineering, uh, for the civil engineering program, you won't find this clearly mentioned in the website what the aptitude uh, assessment means and how the marks are being distributed. You won't find this there. So that's why you have to do a little bit of research i did that uh, this document can be found in the download section of the civil engineering department but it's not quite visible so you have to uh, you know browse a lot <laughs> to get this so yeah and sometimes this type of study regulations are mainly written in german which can be a big hurdle for us so uh, the good thing about the uh, you know german university is that they are very transparent about the admission process that what are the things uh, they will require uh, uh, to get you the admission and what are the things matter to them uh, so those are things those things are very transparent to them that, that thing i i really like 
uh, the things that is not mentioned in the admission requirements it doesn't matter if you have that or not if you don't meet their requirements you won't get the admission and now for example you have a uh, good score in GRE and you have uh, several years of work experience and in the admission regulation none of this were mentioned then those things uh, won't be counted so this this is the thing you should keep in your mind so first of all the question was is it possible to uh, to apply without IELTS so uh, if we if we uh, uh, if we go here in the qualification requirements I mean the language requirements as you can see that uh, sufficient German uh, language skill okay the status of the technical university of realization leave of absence okay here i want to highlight student whose language of instruction is not english is to be certified by a recognized language tests so this is the most important thing if your bachelor degree was conducted in english and if you have the certification that um, where it is certified where it's clearly stated that your bachelor bachelor degree was conducted in english or otherwise if you have the uh, you know medium of instruction certificate or another word we called as uh, my if you have that and if you can prove them and if if you can show them then you don't require uh, the foreign language test or standardized test like uh, IELTS or TOEFL here they mentioned if you have IELTS then you need to show a minimum of 6.5 point, uh, points now if you have a medium of instruction certificate then you don't need that so is it possible to apply without IELTS yes it's absolutely absolutely possible only if your bachelor degree was conducted in English so uh, the next question becomes will there be any effect due to my low IELTS score uh, mentioned here that uh, your IELTS score should be uh, should not be less than 6.5 now what happens if someone has a band score of 9 will he or she gets any privilege uh, to the admission so that we will see uh, in the in next page so now okay Okay, so we will straight uh, forward go into the suitability procedure. So we'll be talking about that. But uh, uh, but uh, before that, uh, let's uh, uh, let's go into the requirement. Uh, what are uh, uh, what are the points you need to uh, achieve uh, to get into the uh, civil engineering program? As you know that uh, to get into civil engineering, you have to score. I mean, there is an aptitude assessment test which is not necessarily or which is not actually a test it is just uh, points uh, given to you based on your documents the documents you provided uh, during the admission procedure those documents are basically gets evaluated and then you get a certain points for that according to which you get the admission for example this is my profile my uh, tome student portal uh, here uh, for example i have got 86 points now they have mentioned that if you get more than 80 out of 100 then you will get a direct admission and if you get uh, less than 69 points then you will get a rejection and in case if your points is uh, uh, from 70 to 79 if it, it falls in that range in that case you will be called for an interview now I have got 86 points which is more than 80 so I didn't have to participate in an interview but in my environmental engineering program uh, my score was 73 and that's why i had to participate in an interview and after outperforming that interview i i had uh, received the admission so uh, so you have to you have to aim how you can pass this threshold number 80 you have to you have to aim for that now the question becomes that what determines that uh, but or uh, what uh, now what have the impact in this uh, score i mean how i i can get uh, the score uh, above 80 so to uh, to answer that firstly we have to look at uh, the things um, uh, which are basically uh, have an impact on this number so for, uh, uh, first of all they are saying what are the criteria basically they are judging we we, we need to fir firstly identify that they say that at least uh, a maximum of 60 points will be awarded where 
uh, they say that if your uh, like the uh, curricular analysis is not carried out but uh, on the basis of competence uh, so uh, they will look uh, for your bachelor's transcript they will see if you have this required modules and this amount of credits whether you had that on your bachelor uh, uh, bachelor study or not for example you have you hear a uh, mathematic uh, that means higher mathematics so for example in my bachelor's i had uh, differential calculus uh, laplace theory uh, laplace transformation uh, uh, matrix and then uh, vector calculus uh, differential calculus integral calculus all those stuff and my total credit was more than 16 credit uh, in mathematics subject so i already passed uh, this threshold and the, and then they mentioned that Technician mechanic, uh, for example, your technical mechanics, which also be referred as engineering mechanics, engineering mechanics, solid mechanics, or something like that. We all had that. Uh, those of uh, us studied in civil engineering background, and then uh, they mentioned hydro mechanic, uh, which is hydro mechanics, and bow and uh, unmelt unmelt informatic, uh, civil and uh, environmental uh, uh, topic, and uh, uh, bow process management, uh, bow uh, civil uh, civ uh, civil uh, civil process management, or Wax stoffer or uh, bow physics. Uh, I mean, your building materials, uh, bow construction, uh, civil construction, uh, tag, uh, uh, tag wax uh, layer uh, means structural design on static, which is uh, your structural analysis. So they will basically match up uh, your bachelor modules with the, with a certain amount of number of credits that if you had that or not in your bachelor transcript. So you have to you know you have to go your uh, you have to go through your bachelor transcript whether you had those modules and a stipulated number of credits or not for example if i go into my student portal i mean uh, uh, my uh, the undergraduate study uh, uh, what courses i studied now these are the different modules i had in my bachelor uh, studies these are the credits these are the grades uh, that i achieved so you have to start, uh, sort of you have to perform this curricular analysis on yourself then you can determine uh, if you have if you had that number of module uh, into your bachelor's program or not and for this for this criteria you will be getting 60 points only i mean 60 points only uh, uh, 60 points can be achieved just by you know qualifying these modules that whether you had these modules into your bachelor's or not so uh, out of 80 out of 80 60 points will be allocated to your bachelor's transcript bachelor's module and next comes uh, and lots of uh, uh, many people said they say that that i have an inferior gra grade um, you know uh, whether i'll be getting uh, admitted into this university or not uh, to answer this let's see what are the points allocated in for the mark or uh, grade in, uh, your uh, your bachelor's grade they say that the maximum number of points is only 20 for civil engineering program for this particular program you will be getting maximum 20 points out of 100 points to get uh, admission into tomb so this is not too much i mean only 20 points uh, mm, uh, uh only 20 20 points is being uh, are being allocated uh, for your uh, uh bachelor's grade so if you have a, an inferior grade you have other 80 points as well to excel how to get admission so don't just stack uh, uh that you have uh, an inferior grade and you have a lower cgpa that's why you can't get into tombs civil engineering i'm not talking about other programs different programs has different regulations but for civil engineering only 20 points will be given to your bachelor's grade now they also said that uh, for foreign degrees uh, the grade converted using bavarian formula uh, so what is this bavarian formula uh, basically you can also uh, determine uh, how much uh, score uh, how much you will score into uh, uh, your bachelor so i mean for example let's assume that someone has achieved 3.75 out of four in his bachelor and you also need to input here what was the minimum passing grade and this can be different uh, according to different university 
for example in the my university i mean if i see that uh, the uh, they have mentioned that for example to be awarded a degree a student has to obtain the minimum cumulative uh, point average 2.25 so my passing grade was 2.25 so if i convert it into the german grade i can see that my uh, probable german grade would be 1.43 which is uh, according to the german grade is very good or very good so let's assume that if you have this point then for example out of you know uh, out of 20 you most probably get 16 or 17 which is high higher in, in, in number but if you have a lower grade uh, than that then still you have nothing to lose because it, it is just only 20 points that will be given to your bachelor's degree so 60 points will be allocated to, to your bachelor's module only and then 20 points will be given to your mark or grade and then the rest rest of the 20 points uh, so yeah, regarding the motivation letter, uh, the, you will be, uh, it's possible to maximum uh, to get a, a maximum score up to 20 points. I mean, the 20 points will be allocated to the motivational letter. The 60 points will be uh, into your bachelor's uh, module only, the bachelor's transcript, uh, and the 20 points will be your bachelor's uh, grade. And another, and the rest of the 20 points will be distributed into your motivational letter. Now, one thing is quite important that many people ask what should i write into the motivational letter or what makes a motivational letter stand out than rest of the other applicants now they have mentioned clearly that the content of the memorandum is evaluated according to the following criteria so when you are going to write a letter of motivation you have to follow this four criteria you have to answer the question that are being asked uh, in in these points it doesn't matter uh, how uh, what you write in your motivational letter other than these points what you write other than these points will not be marked so this thing you definitely uh, this thing you have to keep this in, in your mind so the first point is can substantiate the choice uh, of the course of study now how can you substantiate that this is the uh, choice of course of your study for example i have written that since i've already studied in civil engineering during my bachelor i've also worked in the civil engineering field so it makes quite a lot of sense that i will be definitely aiming for a consecutive master's program rather than changing my field into a, another field so this gives a lot of uh, you know uh, a better suitability uh, that uh, why i'm interested to this program you can definitely write about yourself uh, just uh give them a little bit of background of uh, uh your previously uh, conducted academic studies or research activities and then they uh, they're mentioning that can present in the relationship between the professional interest and the content the contents of the program structure now here i followed uh one tricks uh that is if you observe uh closely into the civil engineering uh module of tomb uh you'll see that they are offering basically 22 areas of specialization that is highly diversified quite diversified so uh, now to uh, to study here uh, you have to select at least four areas of specialization so why not you mention them beforehand what are your intended for uh, specialization is going to be for example uh, here you can study uh, in structural mechanics specialization you can study in hydro mechanics structural analysis uh, traffic control and transport planning why not you mention them beforehand uh, in your letter of motivation then okay uh, i would like to study in a structural mechanics structural analysis this will be my two specialization out of the four specialization now why you want to study that okay uh, for example during my bachelor's uh, i found lot, lots of topics in structural mechanics on structural analysis uh, which was uh, interested to me which i felt uh, quite interested and uh, also if you have some if you did some sort of work in your bachelor for example your bachelor's thesis if it was related to structural mechanics you can also mention that then this gives a lot of creditability that uh, yeah th that makes you or this is the reason why uh, you have chosen you have chosen this uh, specialization so you can mention that uh, into your uh, for example uh, your letter of motivation basically that's what i did 
and then can convincingly substantiate the particular suitability of the master course through arguments and related extracurricular activities for example i said uh, when i used to work as a structural engineer i was introduced with a lot of topic uh, related to finite element modeling and structural design or retrofitting uh, that really fascinated me a lot during my bachelor's i uh, did a numerical anal analysis uh, and also i did uh, experimental analysis in the reversible loading or the dynamic loading so i i mentioned that and i said okay uh, since i am getting the opportunity uh, to uh, enroll in further courses related to the dynamic uh, dynamic analysis and the numerical analysis in tomb that's why i felt much interested to this program since i have already done this sort of work in my past so those are my uh, work related or uh, kind of fall into the ac academic area uh, that I've talked about and you can also if you feel that uh, you have did certain amount of extracurricular activities which is related to this program you can also mention that and also they said that can linguistically uh, emphasize key, key points of the statement of reason for example I I, I mentioned them why I am particularly interested in Germany for example I said that during my bachelor's uh, I was introduced uh, in a topic named as a Boschinger effect. Now, Boschinger was a German uh, civil engineer or a German scientist. Uh, uh, if you have studied civil engineering and if you have uh, uh, studied the solid mechanics, then also you know the concept of Boschinger effect. Uh, so I said that uh, uh, by uh, reading uh, the biography of Boschinger, I felt interested to know about another uh, other civil engineers uh, who has contributed to the civil engineering other civil engineers belongs to germany who has contributed who has a lot of contribution in, uh, into uh, uh, our civil engineering uh, domain so uh, that basically i said uh, and from that time i became fascinated to know much about uh, germany uh, so I, 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 those were my reasons that I said why I was interested in Germany and also I said why tomb because uh, many people will say that tomb uh, is the uh, uh, the most prestigious university in the world is highly ranked and blah 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 but those things are you know I think highly generalized and uh, I think it doesn't stand out that much so what I did I did a little bit of research about TUM what are the benefits I'll be getting uh, if I if I become a student in TUM for example they pro, uh, provide uh, free access to the Coursera uh, for their students and also as a student of TUM you have the privilege to uh, enroll in different courses uh, which is which doesn't have to be which, which doesn't necessary that it has to be in your within your department you can take courses from other departments as well so those are the things I mentioned that I liked about tomb this made me uh, to consider tomb as my uh, future university so th there's things you can also uh, mention there so and they then they're saying that the, the Commission independently assess each of uh, the four criteria uh, with equal uh, weighting of the criteria for that means uh, if uh, 20 points uh, is allocated to this motivation letter then five points will be given to each of the points that I've discussed uh, if if you have scored uh, five points in all of the four points then you will be getting 20 points altogether so the total mark will be then summed up so when writing a letter of motivation you definitely definitely have to keep these four things in your mind otherwise uh, no matter how good your motivational letter it is, it will definitely not be um, evaluated, evaluated that much. So this is the reason why I feel this uh, document is so important and too many people makes a lot of mistake when writing this motivational letter. So if they follow this four criteria, I think they will be able to write a good letter of motivation. So we have discussed about all the 100 points. Now, for example, if you have received more than 80 points then definitely you will get the admission and what happens as i say if you get uh, 70 to 79 you will be called for an interview now also they have also mentioned that uh, what will be the duration of the interview for example they have said that minimum 20 to maximum 30 minutes so the interview dur duration will be uh, 20 to 30 minutes now what are the questions are going to be asked in the interview like they said that justification for the choice of the master's program of civil engineering why did you choose this uh, this program why not any other program what makes you suitable for this program so this thing will be asked and then they said explanation on the topic 
of the final thesis in the bachelor program so you will be definitely going to ask about your bachelor thesis uh when i uh was interviewed in environmental engineering i was asked about my bachelor thesis so have a clear conception about your bachelor thesis what sort of work you did and what was the outcome so and what was the thing that you want to do in further uh from your bachelor thesis you have to mention that and also they said that understanding of complex engineering context and questions on the basis of sketch like representation of a solution for an exemplary problem so you will be also you are going to be asked about you will be given a problem a certain problem from civil engineering topic this can be from transportation engineering structural engineering uh, water resource engineering any other five domains that we have started in, uh, during our bachelors you will be given that uh, you will be asked uh, that topic so you have to solve that problem and then the personal impression i mean what they feel about you after uh, taking the interview now uh, what they're saying that uh, each of the uh, members keep tracks of the outcome of the selection interview on the scale of 0 to 80 now 0 to 80 so you uh, you the maximum number you can get from the interview is 80 with 0 being the worst and 80 being the best result to achieve now the thing is the score results from the arithmetic mean of the individual ratings uh, in significant places should be round up okay and uh, now they're saying that the, the total number of points in the second stage is the sum of the 5.2.3 which was 5.2.3 uh, the uh, interview and also 5.1.1 like we have discussed in previously so if you have scored in the first round more than 70 i mean the more you get the more your chances will be to for for being selected since uh the first the round uh, the marking from the first round and the points from the second round will both be summed up so that's why uh if you get good uh, good points into the round one then your uh, the chances of getting getting admission will be definitely much higher so now the thing is like as uh, one thing i would like to say that they have uh, inclu uh, mentioned that the curricular analysis is not carried out by a schematic comparison of the modules they will not just only look at look into the uh, your modules like for example you, in your mod bachelor's module it was mentioned that you had higher mathematics okay this model was there then it's okay they will not do that they will also look for the i mean uh, basis of the competencies which means the learning outcome what uh, uh, what were the topics that were uh, included into those module now how do they know that for example what i did and what i did uh what i did is uh for example uh, in my application uh, portal i have mentioned the website a website of my university where the course curriculum was located for example here uh what are the course we studied during our bachelors is clearly mentioned so you can also mention your university website uh, where the outline of the courses are mentioned additionally what you can do i have also uh, submitted this prospectus uh, prospectus into the other documents uh, during the time of application here also uh, the courses we studied during our, our bachelors is clearly mentioned so uh, alternatively if uh, if uh, your university doesn't have all the courses mentioned in the website you can also uh, submit this outline of courses or simply a course module you can also do that by this uh, by looking at this they will have a uh, um, much better way to find out what were the courses you started into during your bachelors now this is very important very important that's why because it uh, it comprises of 60 points 60 points only i mean uh, 60 points are allocated for this uh, course module only so this is the this is the reason why you have to be very careful while you are submitting your transcript and also try to make sure that uh, you are giving them the course module or at least giving them uh, or at least include uh, your uh, course modules website uh, website address uh, while you are uh, while you are applying so uh, one more thing i forgot to tell you uh, in, uh, in admission they require a tabular cv now many people make this mistake uh, they don't pay attention while uh, uh, 
making their CV. So this is the reason why you have to uh, uh, keep in your mind the correct format, how you should submit the CV. For example, if I go to Tom's website, they are saying that uh, please provide information on each period up to the month of your application leave no gaps for example you have passed uh, in uh, october uh, 2019 now you're going to apply in 2021 you have to mention that in your cv that within these two years what have you done even if you did nothing then also you cannot uh, uh, put the gap in your cv you have to write the uh, you have to mention the time period and then you have to most probably write that uh, no particular activities but still you have definitely have to mention that now many people doesn't uh, keep this thing into their mind and later they got screwed up so yeah definitely these things uh, you have to keep this uh, on your mind and also uh, regarding the format they are suggesting that to apply uh, use the europass format you can do that but you can also look for the format like i like this format and this format is being uh, being quite used in germany where as you can see uh, in the left corner your date timeline will be mentioned for example from 2019 to 2021 and in the right side your activities will be mentioned this is how you can prepare you know a, 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 a tabular cv or your password format cv or you can say a german style cv whatever you name it so yeah so you have so you have to keep a uh, thing in your mind uh, related to your cv and also the points are discussed here Mm, that uh, uh, in which points uh, are, mm, will be given uh, for which criteria you have to keep this thing in mind and uh, let's answer the later question that I have an inferior CGPA is there still any hope to get an admission like I've discussed your CGPA only comprises of 20 points still you have 80 points to play with so definitely yes you will you can have an admission uh, by having a lower C even having a lower CGPA uh, does letter of motivation matters? Yes, it matters because it comprises of 20 points. You will be getting 20 points in your letter of motivation. If you don't submit it, you will get zero. So yes, it matters. Does the module modules taken in bachelors have an impact on admission? Definitely, definitely have an impact on admission. Like we have seen that your bachelor's modules, only your bachelor modules comprises of 60 points. That determines your suitability, whether you are going to get an admission or not. And, and the next question, what are the questions being asked in the interview? I've already discussed uh, it. Uh, what are the questions that can be asked? Do I have to follow any special format while writing a CV? This is also I've just answered a bit earlier. So yeah, uh, this was the whole video. And I think uh, that it can help you a lot. If you have still uh, more question, you are always feel, uh, you are always uh, welcome to leave it in the comment section below and you can also reach me in facebook and you can also ask me if you have any further doubts so that's it for today i'm fires signing out choose coming to this part of the video i'd like you to introduce with big uh, they're basically an institution which provides german language at a very affordable price uh, this video is not being sponsored and i'm not being sponsored by them but uh, since i'm i've been doing my a2 with them and i'm uh, enrolled with them i'm involved with their activities uh, I, I like their service uh, that's why i'm just suggesting i'm not not recommending or i'm not promoting anything i'm just suggesting you can you guys can definitely look this into uh, look this uh, Basically, the problem is in Goethe Institute, uh, the language fees are quite higher. Even uh, for a single uh, a level, they charge uh, more than 20,000, which is, uh, I think, a bit of quite expensive for those of you. That's why those of you are looking uh, to learn uh, German language in uh, your native, in our native language in Bangla, and also at an affordable price. You can, you guys can definitely check this out. Uh, their Facebook pages and also the website the links of everything uh, will be given into the video description you guys can definitely check this out